It's MasterChef, and the knockouts continue. Last time, Catherine went home, leaving just the strongest 11 cooks. They have been split into two groups, and now the first is back to fight for a place in the competition. For the first time, they'll be thrown into a professional kitchen. Can you be all right with that, Robert? Yes, Chef. I'm sure you'll smash it. Never used one of these before. It's great. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Then they'll have to cook for one of the industry's most demanding and respected chefs. I like the looks of your plate. Looking forward to trying this dish. At the end, for one of them, their competition will be over. There are, without doubt, some really, really good cooks in this competition. So far, all the good cooking we've seen from you has been in here, in the MasterChef kitchen. Now, for the first time ever, we are sending you to a professional kitchen. <laughs> you five are totally responsible for lunchtime service. The professional kitchen is being handed over to you completely. A huge responsibility. Do us proud. Off you go. Get your chef's whites on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cooking for paying customers is quite a daunting task. But yeah, I reckon I'm up for it. I'm up for the challenge, definitely. Peter's bought some really interesting dishes in this competition. This food makes you stand up and think. I love wearing chef whites. They're pretty hideous looking, but yeah, I feel, I feel proper professional. What I love about Laura is she makes food that I really want to eat. Good, honest, sound cooking with loads of flavour. Being in a professional kitchen, I'm going to have to learn fast. But I think I'll be methodical and I think I'll be cool under pressure. Tony's been great in this competition, almost faultless. We've seen him take humble ingredients and create something really wonderful. This is the reason that I entered MasterChef. Not many amateurs do get to cook in a professional kitchen, so I'm just looking to, to lap up the experience. Robert is slowly but surely making his way towards the final. Nothing huge, no big explosions, but very good food. Fran has really changed through this competition. Her food's got more and more refined. Taking over a whole lunch service is an extreme amount of pressure, really extreme. But we're up for it. I reckon we're, we're good enough. We can do this. The contestants are being sent to the typing room in London's Bethnal Green. The first solo venture for 28-year-old chef Lee Westcott. Two beef, two collie, two halibut, two preza. It has gained critical acclaim despite being open for only a few months. Me and my guys, we've worked in some hard kitchens, and I think we always try and push to to improve our food. It's a little bit intricate, innovative. We're a little bit experimental. I wouldn't say our food was easy. There is some technicality to it, for sure. A protege of Jason Atherton and Rene Redzepi's Noma, his food displays their influence with a twist of its own. I think for the amateur cooks, the leap from the home kitchen to this kitchen is, is a big leap. Morning, guys. You know, the stands are high here. I expect quite a lot from you guys. But I just ask that you focus and just remember what I'm going to tell you. We've got a very busy day ahead of us, so let's make our way downstairs. The five amateurs will be solely responsible for lunch service. We're going to have to land on our feet, I think, but it's exciting and I'm terrified. This is like, uh, you know, straight 
it's trial by fire, isn't it? You know, they've got three to four hours to get ready for service for 12. Then I've devised a five-course tasting menu. They all get a course each. They're going to prep alongside myself and a few of my guys. Not sure what to expect from, from these amateur chefs, so... Fran is in charge of the first course, a complex dish of scallop with pickled apple and compressed cucumber, oyster and dill emulsion, raspberries and apple jelly, topped with dill, nasturtiums, and a dusting of dried scallop roe. That's just going to go onto the plate in a nice little pile in the middle. Just try and be quite neat when you do this so you don't make a mess on the plate, otherwise you're just going to create yourself more work. You've got some raw scallop here. And then you're just going to layer these nice and tight around that pile that you've made in the middle. The scallops, it's all going to be layered up in a certain structure. And if they don't remember or if they do it the wrong way, then they will, they'll, again, they'll have to start again. And then on the top, then you put a nice dot of the oyster emulsion in the middle. What we have here is an apple jelly sheet. Now, these are quite technical to make. You cut them out into discs, they're going to be very thin. You just lay that over the top gently, peel that off. So you're just literally finishing this with some herbs. It's a little bit of the dill oil. And last but not least is scallop roe powder. Like dehydrated. Dehydrated, yeah. exactly. Okay. That's it. Wow. Can you be able to do that? Yeah. Fran, this is the first dish on the taste menu that the customers will get. No aware. pressure. Yeah. No pressure at all. Very delicate, very precise, pretty much unlike anything I've ever cooked before. So I just hope that I can do it justice. Fran's prep starts with the cucumber. It has to be compressed five times. So that counts as once. Let's go. Two. <laughs> Laura will be making the yeasted cauliflower puree with roasted cauliflower, cauliflower crisps, pickled grapes, mint and crispy capers. That's the second dish on the tasting menu. Okay. And it's a hot dish, all right? That's actually been on the menu since day one. It won't be going anywhere for a while, I don't think, so it's one of my favourites. So what you're looking for on this is a nice golden brown colour. On every side? Yes. And stick that in the oven. OK. In the pan. There's no part of the cauliflower that goes to waste. It all gets used. So what you do with all the trim, you make a roasted puree out of it. OK. And we cook it with yeast. OK. What it does, it gives it kind of like a multi flavour. OK. Nothing goes in the bin at all. Right. Cool. Oh, that looks nice. I like this. That's just cauliflower crisps, really. Yeah. So again, another texture yeah. of cauliflower. So, Lawrence, it's got to look like that every time. Are you feeling confident you can do that or not? Yeah, I am, actually. I think I can do that. Yeah? Yeah. I think you can as well, then. Yes, You're too positive. Yeah, yeah, good. very. Very. Very good. Really like it. Mmm. Really good. I didn't know you could get so much flavour out of a cauliflower. It's amazing. I am finally slicing cauliflower for the garnish. It's actually really hard because I'm not very strong. I'm doing a good job, though. This one's good. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect, thanks. The next dish to go out will be Tony's. Sea bass with courgette and basil puree, heritage tomato, roasted squid and fried squid tentacles, black olive crumb and sauce, semi-dried tomato petals and basil oil. Season this sea bass and the squid with olive oil. And then to cook, you just put a gentle amount of pressure in the middle. Tomatoes underneath the salamander, just to warm through while the fish is cooking. Yep. You just want to check the fish every now and then. I'm then going to place that in the oven. OK. OK, on the skin side. Then we're going to cook the squid belly, score side down, so it's been scored. A nice golden brown, that's why you need a hot pan. Yep. And that'll just roll around naturally. And just stick that in. You've got quite a lot going on at once, you know. You've got your squid, your bass, your tentacles, yeah. and you've got to watch your tomatoes. OK. You have got a lot to focus on, mate. What do you think? It's beautiful. A challenge you reckon you'll get or not? Yeah, I'll get it for you. <laughs> I reckon you will, mate.
That's absolutely stunning. I've never done anything like this before. It's a whole nother level. Yeah, this is unreal. So I will uh, try and do it justice. Um, looking forward to learning some new techniques. Hopefully good enough to do the chefs proud and not to uh, embarrass them. But uh, yeah, expectations are definitely high. The final savoury dish is Pete's. Barbecued and roasted lamb loin and belly with charred baby onion shells, onion marmalade, roasted garlic puree, yoghurt, chive oil and chive powder. The lamb rump, we're going to barbecue them downstairs yeah. and water bath them. Season it with a little bit of olive oil. Yeah. So there's a little bit of fat on here, you can see? Yeah. So that's the first side that enters the pan. So what you're aiming for there is to get that lamb fat nice and crispy. Right. And you're going to put that in the oven for two minutes. In the same pan, this is the lamb belly. Yeah. And both sides really golden brown, and that's it. And then we're going to put that in the oven just to warm through, so it's nice and tender, and that'll be it. Cool. So you've got a nice medium red bit of lamb there, OK? Do not want it overcooked. Finish with the lamb sauce. And that's it, Pete. The two lamb elements yeah. are the ones that you've got to concentrate on. All right? OK. Yeah, I hope that I can get it up to the price looking as good as that. Especially when pressure's on and there's, you know, multiple orders coming in. You know, it's, uh, it's going to be tricky. <laughs> Pete's first big challenge is butchering the lamb belly. Against the bone, yeah? Against the bone. Have you done any butchery before? No, never. Uh, no, never. That's the first time. Yeah, it's the first time. Wow. Uh, that... <laughs> You're doing a great job then. That's really nice. You're very confident with the knife. That's really good. Finally, Robert's dish will finish the tasting menu. Coffee panna cotta with coffee ice cream and fudge, coffee meringue cake, orange gel, orange powder, and burnt orange segments. So first of all, you've got the coffee panna cotta. A few bits of burnt orange segments. So the way you burn them is with a blowtorch. Sure. Set meringue cake. You've got caramel fudge here. A little spoonful of that. And then you've got a coffee ice cream. Now, this bit's quite technical. Okay, you're going to roche it. Roche in is um, a one-handed spoon movement, all right? In and out. And that's it. Are you going to be all right with that, Robert? I'm not going to stand in front of you and tell you I can't do it. I mean, you're putting me on service. Yes, chef. I'm sure you'll smash it, mate. The concern is with the prep, so I just want to crack on now, get that done. And once I've got that there and ready for me for service, then I'll be feeling a lot better. There are seven elements to the dessert, the most urgent of which is the coffee ice cream, which will need time to freeze. Thankfully, the majority of this is in the prep. So at the start of service, I should have a good idea of how I'm doing, what I'm doing. We are an hour and a half off service, so uh, yeah, not not long, not long at all. I'm serving the first course, so I feel like I need to be right on top of things, so I don't slow everyone else down. The most technical part of Fran's scallop dish is making the apple jelly discs. It instantly sets, so you've got to move it around as quickly as you can to make it even. And if you don't do that and it's not even, then you, you can't use it. And you've got to throw it away and start again. So it's like one of those silly games you get at Christmas where you've got to get the ball in the hole. Oh, come on. Did you do this one? Yes, I did. It's very good. Thank you. She's doing really well. I know some of my chefs are kind of do it right. But for her to get it on the first day, that's pretty impressive. Laura's cauliflower dish has some unusual components. I've pickled a lot of stuff, but grapes is not one of the things I've pickled. I've never used one of these before. It's great. Brilliant. 
and the cauliflower puree requires meticulous cooking. You've got to get every bit of it cooked properly. It's all got to go golden brown, because if it's just golden brown in bits, it won't have the right flavour. And there's quite a lot of it, so it's taking a while. La la la. The lamb rump for Pete's dish has already been hung for a day to dry out and spent two days marinating in rosemary, thyme and olive oil. So Pete needs to get the cooking spot on or three days of prep will be lost. Now what we're going to do, we're going to barbecue them, OK? OK. So that's extremely hot. So you don't want to be for too long, because otherwise you're going to overcook it. OK, so what are going to do next? Yeah. We're going to backpack them. We're going to cook them at 56 degrees for 35 minutes. OK. Yeah, take them out. Okay. Beautiful. That's got 400 degrees by now. That's extremely hot. So now they're going to get backpack. Do you know what temperature? Uh, is it 60, 50, 56. 56? How long? For half an hour. 35 minutes. 35. It is very, right, important. very important. Yeah, yeah. If it overcooks, they're all ruined. Yeah. If it's undercooked, when you roast it in the pan and rest it, yeah. it won't. It'll be, when you cut it, it'll be too raw. Yeah. And then it, 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 no, it'll have to go in a bin. We'll start sure. again, mate. Pete, to me, looks keen. He's just a bit nervous. Hopefully, when he gets upstairs, calm his nerves a bit and he'll be all right. But, you know, he's doing a good job as well. He just needs to maybe just relax a little bit. With his ice cream done, Robert's next job is to get the coffee panna cotta made and set. I've knocked out a panna cotta. It wasn't in an acetate tube, though, I can tell you that much. Very nice. Perfect, Chef. Thank First attempt, well done. Repetition breeds success. Across the kitchen, Tony is already on his last bit of prep but scoring the squid properly is essential to getting his dish right. Just making sure we've gone deep enough into the flesh that it curls when we cook it. I'm uh, a bit more concerned about the, uh, the service itself. I think we're going to be under quite a bit of pressure. Guys, finish what you're doing and let's go upstairs, all right? Yes, yes Chef. Service is now 15 minutes away, and the contestants have to set up in the open kitchen next to where the diners will eat. We can be seen by everybody, which is uh, slightly petrifying. Fran, you're going to be first up, and you don't have much time when you get your first check on. You've got to be quick, all right? Sort of work together and amongst each other, all right? If you don't keep clean, we're in a very small kitchen. It will look like a bomb site. So please, please keep clean, all right? <sighs> Definitely going to put my tash under the salamander at some point. <laughs> it's up to the amateurs now. The chef's brigade is being sent away. I thought you were going to be in here with me. No, chef. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, I'm okay. worried now. Good luck. OK, thank you very much. Smash it. Really appreciate your help. I'll right, just get in your sections. The worrying thing for me is that I have chefs that have been cooking for years and then they're going to be replaced with the amateur cooks. And that, for me, is quite worrying. All right, guys, check on. That's two menus. That's two scallop, two collie, two bass, two lamb, and then two coffee. Chef. Yes, yes, Chef. And salt and oil. Fran's first up with her scallop dish. OK, guys, listen up, yeah? We've got two scallop away. That's going to be going very shortly, which means you need to think about getting prepared because you're going to be straight after and straight after and straight after, OK? Yes, yes, yes. None of the elements to Fran's dish need cooking, but the presentation is complex. She needs to be a little bit quicker. Yeah. Because you get a few more orders on. Yes. You don't want to fall behind. Okay. Right now, it's nice and calm. In about 10 minutes, you'll start to see the motor, and then the smoke will come from the heels of their shoes. Check on, guys, another two menu. Yes, Chef. So, Fran, that's four scallop all yes, day. Yes, Chef. You're doing really well, Fran. Thank really you, well. Chef. Okay, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's two scallop okay. done. You've got two more away. Yes, thank you, Chef. Okay, service, please. First two to table 16. I'm just really under the cosh at the moment, but it is going okay. Chef seems to quite like what I'm doing, which is lovely. 
presentation is beautiful and the taste is surprising and very nice. If that's an indication of the rest of the meal to come, bravo Fran. For her cauliflower dish, Laura has to brown some florets in the pan to just before burning point. So, uh, yeah, we're all right. As soon as he says go, I'll stick that in the oven and then it'll be around time to plate. OK, once the grapes are warmed up, let's have them to me. OK. That's it, that's great. Lovely. Nice and hot. Nice and hot. And now we're going to plate our first two cauliflower, Laura. OK, because the thing is, you've got to be quick with these, Laura, otherwise what happens is the dishes will get cold. Yeah. Lovely. Two cauliflower, table ten. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Let's go pick them up onto the tray. Service, please. OK, Laura, they look lovely. OK. You've got to be a little bit quicker, though, all right? Quicker, A little okay. bit quicker. Yeah. All right, guys, okay. service, please. I think Laura's done a great job, absolutely. The textures are right, flavours are right. Yeah, very good. All right, Tony. Yes, Chef. We're going to go on two sea bass. Yes, Chef. How long are you going to... One minute, gonna please, be? Chef. One minute? Yes, Chef. Tony is under pressure, with the four elements of his dish all being cooked to order. The sea bass, squid, tentacles and tomatoes. Hectic, fun, stressful, all in equal measures. OK, Tony, let's go now. Free up, please. That's actually very nice. It's good, Tony. Looking good. Thank you, Chef. Lovely. I get them on the pass. Service, please. Thank you, Chef. Please pass. It's hot, there's a lot of pressure, there's a lot of work to do, and uh, there's not much space, as you can see. As his dish is the last on the tasting menu, Robert still has a tense wait. We've got desserts away soon on anything. Unlike Pete, who's up next? Three minutes, two lamb. Yeah. You remember that? Three minutes. Three minutes on two lamb. Yeah. All right, great. Yeah, great to get started. I was sat here sort of twiddling my thumbs for a minute, wondering when it was going to hit, but, you know, now it has. Just got to keep off and, you know, be on the ball. So, Pete, we're going to go in three minutes on two lamb. Yeah. So start getting yes, things up slowly. Timing is key for Pete, who needs to cook the three days in the making lamb with absolute precision. Just take your time, Pete. Just make sure it's beautiful, all right? Yeah. That's it. You've got to be quick, because this is a hot dish. Yeah. Lovely. Just drizzle it a little bit in there and just dot it instead of pull it. When I say dot, what I mean is you go in and you just dot. OK. OK, next one you're going to get right. Yeah. OK, service, please. Two lamb, table 12, Eva. Straight here. Table 12, please, thanks. Uh, the lamb was fine. The elements, yeah, it was good. Yeah, generally all right. Pete has understood the dish. And he's combined these flavours brilliantly well. It's finally time for Robert to get his first desserts out. Yeah, I'm glad to be underway. And, uh, yeah, it's going OK. His dish requires meticulous plating, with a technical challenge to master. The Rocher is uh, by far and away the hardest thing to do on this dish. Chef, you got desserts on the pass? Again, I'm not happy with the Rocher on that one. I don't know what you want to do with that. No, we're going to do Rocher again, so... No problem, we're going to take these back. It doesn't actually look like a Rocher. I think he'd send that one. It's nice and smooth all the way along. I think that's the key to it. Desserts on the past, Chef. These rochets are much better, but there's still room for improvement. Thank you, Chef. OK, service, please. I think it was a good start. There's definitely room for improvement, as Chef identified. I tell you what, a big man with big hands, this is very fancy and delicate work. Well done, Robert. It's an hour into service and more orders are coming in. I need two more scallop. How long, please? Four minutes, five minutes. I'll give you four minutes on two scallop, and then after that, you're going to have four scallops. You've yes, really got to move, Fran. Yes, Chef. 
Very good, Fanny. You need to be a little bit faster, please. Yes, Chef. Fast and neat. <laughs> Where's his raspberries and stuff first? Is there a sorry, Cher? OK, Fran, well, hold on one second. Yeah. You've got to remember the system, all right, as yeah. we spoke about. So what I suggest you take the deal off. Yeah. Come on, quickly, let's take the deal off. Yeah. Put the raspberries on. got to remember on. what I'm telling you, Fran. Yes. You've done it, you've done it many times before. I They've know. Been beautiful. I don't know what happened. I just you had just, a blank. you just got to focus. I don't even know where my herbs are now. Chef. I think you rushed this one a bit because it looks a bit flat. You just need to make sure you're a bit neater, OK? Thank you, Chef. Okay. Yes. Table nine, please. Really, it's one after the other. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Laura's also going at full tilt. Yeah, I've got another two and then another three. Laura, at the moment, is um, probably at her peak. Right, cauliflower. Let's just yep. get a lot of cooked. Throw that in the bin, we'll do more. Okay. Laura, let's go. Concentrate now, Laura. With all the other elements ready to go, Laura has to work fast to catch up. We've got to be quick now because these are going to get cold. Yeah. If they're cold, they will not be able to go out. Lovely. Okay. That's it. Now I'm going to go on the crisps. Yeah. That's it. They're very good. Apart from that little dribble there. That dribble and... Yeah, no, there's... Are you happy with these, Laura? No, not this one. Right, yeah. yeah. Are you happy with these? No, not this one here either, round the back. Very good. Well spotted. Service, please. Nice. Very nice. Good. Service, please. Good, good, good. It's delicious. An awful lot of work has obviously gone into it. It's very, very tasty. Very nice. OK, Tony, you're going to give me four sea bass soon. Four sea bass, chef. Okay, one, one second. Okay, Tony, what's happened here is they haven't curled up enough, all right? Yes, yeah. So I'm going to take them out. I'm going to start again. Okay, so you need to be quick before the fish overcooks. One sec, one second. I'm going to take the squid off, okay? Because yes, each time we're cooking it, we're so not curling. cooking it correctly. I am quite disappointed about that, all right? In fact, very disappointed because it's, it's, for me, it's a crucial part of the dish. Yes, chef. But at the moment, this is just too slow and it's not working, so I'm going to take it off the menu, all right? Sorry, Sorry chef. Sorry, chef. That squid. I either didn't score them enough up front or uh, my pan wasn't hot enough. I think he scored half of them correctly. You know, if it, if it won't roll, it's too tough. If it's too tough and it's going to have to come off the menu, you know? We've still got tentacles, which is, uh, which is good. Greg, just get rid of that squid. No, no squid anymore. Table 14, please. Service, please. Thank you. I don't normally eat the tentacles of a squid, but that was absolutely delightful. I've got to say, right now, I feel for them a little bit, because Lee's food is detailed, it's sophisticated, it's exacting. OK, Pete, yeah. we're going to go two lambs straight after this, OK? Yes, Chef. Try standing behind here for five minutes, it's ridiculous. Yeah, and apparently this isn't even that, that hot. It gets hotter. That lamb is the best lamb you've cooked all day. Thank That's you, sir. stunning. You see the cuisson on that? Yeah. Beautifully pink. Come on, let's carry on, carry on, keep working. And little dots. Pete, these are much better than your last ones. Perfect. Yeah. Four more lamb. Let's keep the momentum going, yeah, sure. OK? We're nearly through. I'm getting things, you know, bang on. So it's good. It's good to hear a few compliments. Absolutely beautiful, stunning, stunning. Whoever cooked this, I want to take this person to marry them and have their children, if I can have their children. <laughs> four and four. Yes, sir. Now the last orders are coming in, Robert needs his plating to be spot on. It's hard work. Um, the Roche is bad. It's just a technique that I haven't been able to master in the time. It requires practice and it just takes too much time for me to get it good. Chef, we've got four desserts on the pass. Yeah. Okay, Robert, come here, please. Chef. 
You got a big piece of fudge here, a big piece here. It's all got to look the same, okay? Yeah, sure. The thing is now the ice cream's starting to melt, so we've got to be very quick. You can't sure. have one big and no. one small. It's got to be consistent. No problem, chef. Okay, service, sure. please. There's uh, one thing after another. Fudge was right on the first two, but there was something wrong with the other stuff. You get the other stuff right and the fudge is wrong. But, uh, I mean, that's what it's about. It's about uniformity. The chef's got his standards and I want to live up to them. Please, can I have table 10 away? Table 10 away. The presentation was immaculate, both beautiful to look at and delicious to enjoy. There are just two tables left to feed, and lunch service will be over. Funnel two scallop, chef. It's really nice, Fran. Service two scallop, please. Fran, that's you done. Done really well, I feel. Chef, I feel awesome. I, keep, I want to keep going. They look really good. <laughs> so awesome. Come on, Laura, it's your last two. Make them the yeah. best two that you've done. Service, please, table five. How are you feeling? Yeah, good. That's fun. I like that. It's good. You're going to go four sea bass? Yes, yeah, Chef. I said you're working methodically. That's good. It's nice. Much better. Thank you, Chef. Table six, please. Table six, please. How are you feeling? Disappointed that I didn't get up your dish as you wanted it to with the squid. For me, I thought you'd done very well, so hold well on, OK? Tony? Thank you very much. Well Appreciate it. Cheers, Chef. Pleasure. Thank you. Come on, Pete, quickly, please. Yes, Chef. Last check. Overall, I think it's going all right. Um, just trying to get these last two perfect. I've got desserts away. I need to go and over the pastry. So you need to be quick. Very nice so far, very nice. Come on, Pete, nearly there. Those last two dishes are the best ones you did. Listen, clean down. Yeah. I'm going downstairs, okay? Cheers, yeah. You have a go at this, Robert. Yeah, sure. It's your last chance to Roche, Rob. Roche. Roche and Clock. You've got to be quick. That one is just about passable, Rob. Thank you, Chef. Got service, two coffee. Well done, Rob. To be honest, the ones that you sent, I was, I was impressed with that you could do them, if I'm honest. <laughs> but you should be really proud of yourself. Please, please say that to him. <laughs> please say that to him. It was tough. I mean, it's very different having five amateurs in your kitchen rather than five professionals. But they kept on going, they picked it up, they composed themselves, which was good. Fran did really well, actually. She started off a bit flustered. Towards the end, she kind of got it. The dishes she was putting up, exactly what we were looking for. How amazing was that? Honestly, I'm totally buzzing. I just want to do it all again. Uh, I thought that Laura didn't concentrate as hard as she could have. she done really well. All I wanted was to increase the tempo a bit. My first experience of being in a professional kitchen, hot, but really good fun and amazing how time flies. I think Tony had the hardest dish. The fish was cooked perfectly. It was just a shame that I had to take the squid off. It's a really, really tough dish. I had my struggles mid-service, beginning of service and the end of service. Pete was very nervous throughout the prep, but by the end, I think he was one of the strongest. He said that the last plate was the best plate of food that I served all day. Yeah, I'm, I'm pleased. The dessert that Robert had today, the hardest thing about that dessert, Roche. Yeah, he got a few out, and I'm pretty impressed with that, to be honest, because a lot of chefs probably had to do that. I definitely got a realistic experience of kitchen life. It was a baptism of fire. Welcome back from your first big MasterChef adventure. We're hoping that you found that experience inspiring and we want to see that inspiration from you now on a plate. Today you have one job and that is to cook for us one beautiful 
delicious dish. Ladies and gentlemen, come up and choose your ingredients. It's quite a daunting task. There's a lot of great ingredients here. Just trying to piece something together in my head to, you know, to do. Nervous. Excited though, some just beautiful ingredients. It's hard because there's so much, so it's quite difficult to hone in on one thing, but yeah. Now it's your chance to prove to us how good you've become. At the end of this, one of you is leaving the competition. One hour, 20 minutes. Let's cook. From the start of the competition, we've been knowing that people will be going home. It's never nice to be facing elimination and have that sort of dread, but I suppose we're getting more and more used to it. Ultimately, I'll try and put the best plate I can on the table in front of them, and hopefully they'll enjoy it and it'll be enough to keep me in. What are you doing today, Robert? I am doing bacon, wild mushroom and Stilton tortellini with Jerusalem artichoke velouté and a truffle crumb. Mate, do you know how to make these things? Well, I have made pasta once before in my life and it was three, four days ago. So we're putting stuff on the line today. Robert's making a ravioli and a fine ravioli it sounds like it could be. Filled with bacon and mushrooms, served in a velouté of Jerusalem artichoke, served with a truffle crumb. And then he goes and chucks in a huge hunk of Stilton. I think he's playing with danger. Laura? Yes? Did you enjoy the professional kitchen? Yes, it was my favourite bit. It was brilliant. That's a very good sign. This is much harder than the professional kitchen, definitely. Why? Well, because you already know with the professional kitchen that what you're going to put on the plate Someone who really knows what they're talking about has said it's dead nice, so you think, well, you feel quite confident, whereas with your own cooking, there's always that worry. OK. And how do you feel about the competition now and your place in it? Very excited. I'll be very sad to go. Oh, bless you. Thanks, Greg. We're always making for us roast partridge, which she's capped with bacon across the breast. She's going to serve that with potato gnocchi. The cabbage puree. And a sage oil. The problem with something like partridge is when it's overcooked, it tastes like sawdust. I'm frightened of the partridge because I've never cooked a partridge before. I kind of felt that I should pick something that I hadn't worked with before and just challenge myself a little bit. That could be really horrible, we'll have to see. <laughs> You are halfway. 40 minutes left. I really felt that I didn't do myself justice in the professional kitchen, and it was where I was probably the least proud of what I produced. Would not like to go home now, so I'm hoping that I can think on my feet and, and, and avoid any dodgy situations. I've just realised you've never done an invention test before. No, not yet. This is the first. Hey. How do you feel about it? I was really nervous when we walked in and found out it was an invention test. And then I saw the ingredients that we've got, and they're stunning. You've drawn a picture of have, your plate. As that, always, That's yeah. one of your trademarks. Yeah, helps me visualise. I know what I want, I know the flavours I want, but how it's got to come together on a plate for me is as important as making sure it's cooked well and it tastes good. Your best dishes have had meticulous previous planning. Can't do that today. No, but I'm caught under pressure, so I'll be fine. Good man, Tony. So Tony's got a piece of fish with purees, oils and sauces. Tony's never going to cook without a game plan. It's all written out, he's got a diagram. But the thing is, I can't eat the diagram. What Tony has to do is make sure that fish is cooked absolutely perfectly.
The plan throughout was to stick to Asian inspired street food. Today I think I'm going to show a different string to my bow and try and do something a little bit more classical. Pete's dish is absolute invention. A fried fish, a piece of grilled fish and an almond sauce. He's got blanched almonds, he's going to cook them in a mixture of mirin and soy to make a sort of browny white almondy puree. He's serving that with a fish beignet or a, a fritter or a donut, a little fillet of sole which he's cooked sous vide, and maybe a poached egg. What Pete's making right now is a really strange combination. Who knows? Wow. Pete, I've never seen you working this hard. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot at stake here, so just trying to get my head down and crack on with it. There's a lot to do. It's nerve-wracking to come in and just to pick ingredients and try and come up with something that impresses both you and John is a hard task, but I'm hoping that, that this will impress. The time is I've just got to run over and get <laughs> my eggs. <laughs> Brilliant timing. Come on! Where's your smile gone, friend? <laughs> it's still there. Did you have your smile on your chops when you were in the pro kitchen? Oh, absolutely. It was bigger than ever. Loved it. So good. So much good fun. <laughs> really? Yeah, you felt, really you felt, felt... That, you felt that comfy? Yeah, I felt really good. What are you making now? Uh, cured sole with potted brown shrimps, pickled chard jelly. Pickled chard in a jelly? Yes. How do you do that? I blanched it and I've suspended it in a pickling liquor with some gelatin. Will so, that work? Yeah, I hope so. It looks good. Will the acidity maybe stop the jelly? I don't know. I don't know. These things I'm going to find out. Fran's dish sounds miles away from anything she's ever cooked before. Where is this stuff coming from? The issue now for Fran is the amount of time she's got to set the jelly because that jelly's not set, and we'll just have a bowl of brown shrimps with cured fish swimming in a pickling liquid with shard stems all over the place. It could look like the Martians have landed. It's really a massive experiment today with foods that I know should, in my head, go together, but who knows? If you don't roll the dice, then you can't take the winnings. You have 15 minutes left. I've never judged an amateur cook before. My expectations wouldn't be at a professional level, so I'll be a bit more lenient. But I don't lie, I'll call it for what I see. If it's not good enough, I'll say it. If the chef needs to improve in a certain area, I'll point it out. It's what I do. How long have we got? You got just three minutes left. That's it. You have to stop. That might just well be the best looking thing I've ever done. Really elegant, isn't it? Yes, yeah. So good. Mm. Because this is such an important part of the competition, we've invited somebody to taste your food and help us judge. Monica Galetti. Robert, would you bring your play up and join us, please? Mm. 
Robert has made wild mushroom, bacon and Stilton tortellini with roasted shallots, truffle panko breadcrumbs and Jerusalem artichoke velouté. I like the looks of your plate. It's a straightforward plate of food. It's a generous portion. It's what you want to see in a portion of tortellini, a bit of truffle to spoil you. I'm looking forward to trying this dish. Thank you, Chef. I love the whole concept of it, pasta, mushrooms, you know, creamy sauce to go with it. But it needs more of that seasoning to complete the dish. The pasta, 30 seconds away from perfection, okay? You know, you've got some fantastic ideas on this plate. I think you're a spoonful of salt away. Everything that you do, taste, taste, taste. Yes, Chef. I'll tell you what I love, the flavour of Jerusalem artichoke with truffle and hazelnuts. It's earthy, woody, nutty, the truffle across the top makes me feel like I'm pretty special. Truffle, mushroom, sprinkled nuts, I'm in pasta heaven. Robert, not bad, mate. Thank you, guys. It's Thank you. Overwhelmed, just completely overwhelmed. I got good feedback at the end of the day, so I, I can only be happy. I'm delighted. Fran? Up you come. Fran has made cured sole with potted shrimps topped with onion rings. She's served it with oyster and parsley emulsion. She also intended to make pickled charred jelly. The jelly kind of melted when I took it out, so the chard's in a pickling liquor instead of a jelly. A little bone. Yeah. I, I do like the shrimps with the butter through it. However, I find the fish is very thick. It's not sliced thin enough and it's raw like that. It's, it's chewy, it, it can be unpleasant. And the whole dish is overridden with pickle and lemon juice. I like parts and elements of, of what this dish is. As, as a whole, it doesn't work. Okay. You've got a piece of raw fish covering Swiss chard, which is covering shrimp topped with an onion ring which is quite greasy, and the vinegar, I feel like I've sort of got the scraps from the chippy. It hasn't quite worked. There is too much pickle in there, and it's too sharp. Look, all of that wetness is all vinegar flavour. I knew when that jelly melted that it was going to become a pickling liquor and it was just going to overpower things. You know, I have to adopt a fatalistic attitude. I've done it. I can't rewind time, so what's the point in rehashing it? Tony, would you come and join us, please? Tony pan-fried the sole and served it with parsnip puree, spinach puree, pickled mushrooms, bacon, beetroot crisps, parsley oil and red wine sauce. You know what, Tony? I'm, I'm disappointed by your plate. I don't know what it is. Something about you. You stand out. So I was very curious to see what you were going to bring to the table. The disappointment, the fish is overcooked. It lacks seasoning. The puree is very glutinous. It should be smooth and, and creamy and should just melt away. It's a shame. I've heard some great things about your cooking. I don't think uh, you've done yourself any justice here. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't recognise this as a dish from you. I honestly don't recognise it. You're a really good cook, Tony, and this dish hasn't worked for you. I'm sorry to say. Sorry, guys. Thank you. I feel really deflated. Didn't feel that, that really anything on the dish went right. So, yeah, really disappointed in myself, but it is what it is. Laura, your turn. Laura's dish is roasted breast of partridge with gnocchi, cabbage puree, crispy cabbage and shallots, and mushroom sauce. 
looks lovely. Really lovely, really modern, but yummy. Draws me in. It's wonderful to see you choose a partridge. It's a nice change from the fish. Unfortunately, slightly over. A partridge mm. you can hear just a little bit more pink would be nice. However, you've got a bit of texture in there. You can taste the, the cabbage. This is not bad. I have to agree completely with Monica in that your partridge is overdone. But saying that, I like the honesty of the fact it is partridge with cabbage, potatoes, bacon and mushrooms. And you've taken it and tried to elevate it. There is a lot to admire in that dish, how it looks, the flavour combinations you put together. And I love that sauce. All in all, I was dead pleased with it. Overcooked. I didn't know how long partridge is meant to take, so I just had a bit of a guess. <laughs> so clearly not 45 minutes. <laughs> Pete, up you come, please, my friend. Finally, Pete has cooked sole in a water bath and served it with a sole and cod beignet, pickled mushrooms, pickled artichokes, charred shallot, almond sauce, and a chive crumb. Some good techniques on your plate, but the fish being sold is quite flat. It could do with a bit more seasoning. The beignet, I can't taste the fish in there. I like the texture of it, it's quite light, but when you say there's meant to be a bit of fish in there, I, I couldn't taste it. But I like where you're going, bringing pickled mushrooms into it and the burnt shallot, some good techniques. What I've got is a mouth full of texture and very little flavour. I like your presentation, I like your style, I like the technique. But Pete, it's not resulting in a, in a delicious plate of food. Exhausted. Um, yeah, you yeah, know, mixed reviews. Yeah, there's nothing I can really say. Yeah. A very interesting round. A few of you delivered. And a few of you, I think you know you're in trouble. Thanks very much indeed. Off you go. Decision time, Mr Wallace. They are good cooks. That's the reason they've made it to this stage of the competition. But I think there's some contestants in here who are trying to run before they can walk. Let's talk about Laura first. Because Laura's partridge was a good-looking plate of food. Two little breasts of partridge, gnocchi, purees. The flavours were good. It could do with a bit more seasoning. But in essence, it was a marriage that worked. I think she had a good day. I think I've done enough to give myself a fighting chance of going through, yeah. I don't think I could have done any more with that. Robert's bowl of tortellini, we all really liked. i tell you what I love was Jerusalem artichoke velouté, hazelnuts and truffle. That's a star thing. He presented a lovely bowl of pasta. The stuffing for the tortellini, the mushrooms, I really enjoyed. I don't think that we can just rest on this one dish, but at the same time, they enjoyed it. And should I go home off the back of that, then I'm going to be happy. As for the other three, we got trouble. Pete's attention and his focus is far too much about what his dish looks like. That's not high on my list of priorities when I eat a plate of food. In my opinion, a dish of texture only and no flavour. I'd love to make it through today. Don't know if that's going to happen, though. Fran tried to, I think, recreate the dish she'd done at Typing Room, and I think she fell a long way short. And I think that was a mistake. So what we ended up was thick slices of sole sitting amongst pickling vinegar. I mean, not great. I'm going to be really nervous in the lineup. It's, um, it's always a tense moment there. What shocks me about Tony is that from one of the leading cooks in the competition, he's really had a tough day. It's Tony's first invention test and it didn't work for him. But this is the first time I've seen Tony anything but brilliant. And I mean that.
If I, by some absolute fluke of luck, get put through, I will absolutely come back uh, swinging. I'm not ready to give up yet. Today didn't go like we thought it would go. We've actually, it's caught us a bit on the hop. This is a tricky, tricky judging decision. A tough test today, we understand. We have to put you through your paces because we need to find the best. We've made our decision. We can't take all of you through. The contestant leaving the competition is Fran. I've really loved it. It's been an adventure. I learned a lot from the people around me, so it's all good. Having had a pretty terrible round, I was convinced I was going home, but uh, I think I got a life. We all knew it was going to be tough. Um, just glad to have made it through, I suppose. Overwhelmed. I've cooked for Monica Galetti. I mean, today's just been a great, great day. I am beginning to believe that I might be able to get to the semis, yeah. Next time, the second group will face their own professional challenge. Don't put the beef on the pass, but it, bring it on, bring it on the, in, the, in a tray or a plate or something. Then Monica Galetti will be back to see who has what it takes. This plate says eat me. For one of them, the competition will be over.